Hi class, in this video we're going to enhance our web form and add a little bit more information. We're going to um, add additional text boxes, try some radio buttons, a list box, put some additional events on our form, a calendar control, and we're going to access our access database from chapter 14 to create a list of members of the club. So we've got a lot to do. When we look at our web form, we saw that the HTML controls didn't make that round trip to the server. So we changed them to run at the server. I'm going to change my title here to be centered. Right now, my cursor, my insertion point is at the beginning of the title. I'm going to use my format menu and choose justify center. I also may want to choose my position to be relative. So depending on what kind of uh, web browser or size resolution monitors being displayed, the form will dynamically adjust. So we want to use those types of features. I'm going to get rid of my image here because we don't need this as we continue on. And we also are getting rid of our email address. So what do we want there instead? We'll add some things. Let's check here. So that's getting us started a little bit. I'm going to take the email. Well, sometimes they have it, sometimes they don't. Let me get to the right spot here. Now, as we look at the controls that are available, let me get rid of the email from our code. Do, 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 do. All right. Now, we'll be adding some additional stuff back in there, don't worry. But instead of the email address, we'll be getting gathering some different information. So I'll eliminate that prompt for now. Now, as I was mentioning, when we look at our controls, we want to be aware of the different types of controls that we have available to us. We saw our HTML controls are rendered at the client side and not necessarily retained throughout our server trip, whereas our standard controls are more like what we're used to working with um, Windows forms. We did create a label control. Let's take a look at it. Looking at this label control, it was a standard control, and we do see that it has standard properties, but if we look through, we'll see that it has many fewer properties than when we're working with a Windows form. To be exact, um, Windows forms, like especially if we were looking at a button, and I'm looking at a label, but on a button, we have 76 properties on a Windows form and 30 on a web form. Let's take a look. Just a little bit less verbose. Additionally, when we're looking at events for those buttons, like clicked event, our Windows form has 60 different events associated with a button, and a web form only has eight. So much more compact. We'll see also that some of the properties are controlled in a little bit different of a way. Instead of a name property, we have the ID property, all of those kinds of things. Now, each of those controls that we'll be using um, has a property called auto postback, and that can be set to true, and that will trigger a postback to the server automatically, which means if somebody changes that control, it will post to the server. So we could end up with a, a request being fired and a server trip being completed, depending on how we have that set up. Let's work with our radio buttons and see how we could do that first. Now I want to finish up my controls over here for our text type information. So after last name, I'm going to add phone number. spaces remember and I want to add a text box. Now this phone number text box is going to be a standard control. 
whereas our other two started out as HTML controls. We'll see if that causes us any trouble. We'll make this txtbx phone number. And then next, I want another description here. And this is going to be for student ID. Kind of put it under that one. <laughs> And we want a new text box, and this one will be named TXT BX Student ID. That looks great. Now, any other changes that you want to make, you can certainly do so. I want to add a few more lines here to move my button down, and right in this open area, I want to add some radio buttons. So let's see what we get if we just do that. Our textbook doesn't really give us a lot of information if you've noticed. So what we're going to do is right about here, I'll tab over a little bit, or I could do format. Set position, how about justify, center, nah, don't want to do that. I'll keep tabbing. So what I want is in here, I want to have <coughs> this heading that says classification. <coughs> Excuse me. And right under that, notice how we're going to kind of be lining things up here. want a radio button. So radio button right about here. And for my radio button, my text is going to say freshman slash sophomore. And I want to name this radio button. So let's see, we want to name it R-A-D, they may have given it an interesting name here, B-T-N-F-R-E-S-S-O-P, for freshman, sophomore. Now under our freshman, sophomore one, we want another one. Can we get one right there? Oh, see how it does such weird things, it's all HTML. So I'm going to have to kind of zero it in the way I want. And this next radio button then is going to say junior, senior. And let me name it R-A-D-B-T-N-J-R-S-R. And one more. I'm pressing tab, I'm trying to get to the right spot, and this radio button will say other, and we'll name it or give it an ID, R-A-D-B-T-N-O-T-A-G-R. Now, when we're looking at this, we're going to put a little message right underneath it that can say something about how they're welcome. So I'm going to click on our next line, and then I want to get it kind of lined up with that stuff. So press tab here, and I'll say that it's going to go right there, and it's going to be a label. And I want my label to be named LBL C L A S S I F like classification. And I'm going to start out with it empty. And notice that it does still display it on the web form. Now I want to select all of these. 
and try to align and make them a little smaller and it's not going to let me so I'm going to have to try to backspace and forward space. Now remember when we're working with radio buttons on our Windows form, we put them in a group box and then that way the system knows that they're related. But how do we do that when we're looking at a web form? We have these different radio buttons and we'd like for the user to only be able to select one of them, right? So let's take a look at our properties. We have this property called group name, and we need to put these into the same group. Let's call it GRP Classif, group Classif. Now I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to add our other buttons to that group. Now if we run our application, You should see that our radio buttons are showing up and we can only select one. And there we go. Now, our radio buttons were a little out of alignment still, so that can be a problem, huh? So if I make them each, let's select them all. And format, set position, relative, and then format, align. Oh, it won't let us. Can we make them all the same width? That helps. Now, since we've made them all the same width, would be nice if it would let us align the lefts, huh? But at least we can kind of see them all being the same size. The joy of web pages, right? You guys are better at it than me. I like things to stay where I put them. <laughs> it's a little less dynamic though. This is much more dynamic. Okay, so we've got our radio buttons in. What I'd like to do is add in an event procedure that's going to execute for each of those. So I'm going to select them all again. And just the same as we could do when we're working with the Windows form, we can go to our events and we can say that if somebody checks or changes one of these, we want to run a given event. And we want to run IED buttons underscore checked changed. Now, when I press enter, it should take me to that code window to enter the code in for that event procedure. So, we're going to see if the freshman software radio button is checked. If so, we're going to update our label our classification labels text property to say freshman and sophomore space. Now if it's not a uh, freshman sophomore we'll see if the junior senior one is checked and if so, we'll fix our label. To say juniors and seniors. Else if the other one is checked.
Oh, got some stuff there, didn't it? We'll make it say special students. And then finally, after our if statement is complete, we'll add to our label the words always welcome exclamation point. Let's run our application. And we can put something in here. Say we're freshman, sophomore. Hmm, look, we had to actually click on that button to get it to update our label. It's not really what we want. We want those radio buttons to be post back events. So let's look at our ASPX file. At our properties. Hmm, right now they're all set to auto post back or false. Let's change it to true and say, yep, I want you to post to the server anytime I change one of these. Check that code behind file and see if there's some code to run. And let's see if that fixes things for us. Ah, there we go. Now we see our label right away. So great, I see a couple of things I want to fix. Let's change our font size on that label. We'll go with small like the rest of that stuff and I'll make it a little bigger. Come on in. Not let me change its size. Well, let's run it. See if at least that font got changed, huh? <laughs> we can tell it's not my area. Okay, freshman, other special students always welcome, junior, seniors always welcome. Looks great. So we've got some dynamic content going on on this web page now. It's no longer just static, is it? So let's see if I can get this lined up a little bit better. There we go. And I'll make the first one over also. Let me see if I like that better. Close. Okay, looking good. Now let's keep going here. So those are our radio buttons. So we got some nice radio buttons on our form. The next thing we want to add, I think, is this list box. And this is going to give us special interest items that our potential club members can choose from. So our list box interests, let's just add something here. Let's find a list box. And I want to kind of get in the right place again before I add it. Of course, I want my heading to be up here where my classification is. And this is going to say special interests. And then underneath our special interest heading, we want that list box. And let's name it LST. 
PX interests. And we'll add some items to our wrist box collection. Let's add social gatherings. Ask a techie and tutoring. Okay. So those are our list box items that we're going to allow people to select from. So let's go ahead and update our submit button. And I think they wanted it to say something different, didn't they? Submit info. So submit info. And I want to update our code for that. So first of all, when they click the submit button, we're going to output their name. Let's see, thanks, first name. Let's change it. Let's get rid of their last name. And after their first name, we're going to say exclamation point. You will be contacted. And then we want it to be kind of a dot, space, dot, space, dot thing. All right, so we got rid of that email address and all of that. Now let's look at our list box of interests. If our list box interests has an item, the index will be greater than negative one. Because we know negative one means nothing selected. So if it's greater than that, something is selected. So let's change our LBL submit or output text to add more to discuss joining the, now we're going to do a um, backslash is an escape character because we want this double quote to display and then our next double quote will close our string and after the double quote we're going to display that list box interest selected item that they picked. And then we're going to double quote, escape, double quote, and say the word team. So now in our output, we'll see the um, interest that they selected surrounded by double quotes because we use those escape characters. Let's try it. Okay, so I'm going to put in some information here, pick a classification, and then I'm going to choose a special interest and submit info. So it says, thanks, my first name, you will be contacted, dot, 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 to discuss joining the tutoring team. Awesome. Okay, so I, my button has jumped way over here to the side. I need to use that format center tool, but it looks like the rest of my form is centered that way too, so I'm probably centered okay. All of this other information is just getting stuck a little bit together, but that's all right. Websites do that, huh? So we're not going to spend a huge amount of time trying to format things. Now, in the next video, we're going to validate some of the information that the user gives us and add that calendar control. So see you then.